I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. No matter what your tank personality, a protein skimmer is on my list of must-have items for your saltwater tank. Now, why do I say that? Well, a protein skimmer will pull out large organic particles out of your tank. And a protein skimmer is a barometer for me for how my tank is doing. For example, if all of a sudden I start getting a lot of skimmate, I'm gonna say, well, maybe something's dead or dying or decaying, or I know I have a lot of excess bio load, maybe excess nutrients in the tank. So I can look at that skimmer, give me a hint of what's going on in the tank, as well as help keep my tank look great. So when it came time to pick a protein skimmer for my 235 gallon tank, I wanted to do things a little differently. On my tank, I went with a recirculating skimmer, specifically, which is the Hydor Performer 2005 model. Now what is a recirculating skimmer and how is it different than most skimmers? Most protein skimmers have one pump that pulls in air and it pulls in water to give you that air-water combo, give you that protein skimming action. With a recirculating skimmer like mine, you've got one pump to feed the skimmer water, another pump that makes an air recirculate the water inside of the skimmer body. Now, due to its design, recirculating skimmers have some advantages and one potential disadvantage as well. The first advantage of a recirculating skimmer is that it can be run inside or outside your sump. That means it can be run internally or externally. It's up to you. Also, recirculating skimmers have increased contact time in the water with the bubbles inside of the skimmer body due to its recirculating design. That means it's going to get better skimmate due to this increased reaction time. And lastly, recirculating skimmers don't have any water depth requirements. Most protein skimmers are made to run in optimal depths of water. If you look in the instructions, it'll say 8 to 10 inches of water or 6 to 8 inches of water. And it's very important that you get that skimmer operating in the right amount of water. This can be a problem when you go to look at your sump. Let's say the skimmer is made to run in 8 inches of water and your skimmer box is 10 inches deep. That means you have to raise that skimmer up 2 inches to get it in the optimal water depth. It requires a little bit more effort and if you have a short stand and a tall skimmer, you can run out of room raising that skimmer up out of the water. With a recirculating skimmer, it doesn't care about water depth. It can run in no inches of water because you can run it externally. It can run in 10 inches of water or 5 inches of water. It doesn't matter because you're feeding that skimmer water off of an external pump. Now this is an advantage for you. For example, in my case, I was able to make a deeper skimmer box because I knew I was going to run a recirculating skimmer. So I didn't care about water depth. I can make the skimmer box deeper, it meant more water in my sump, more total system volume. Now those are some advantages of recirculating skimmers. Let's look at one potential disadvantage. One potential disadvantage when it comes to recirculating skimmers is that they can require two pumps to run. Remember, one pump is going to feed that skimmer water, and the other pump is going to mix in the air and recirculate the water inside the skimmer. Now this isn't always the case. For example, in my tank, I was able to feed the skimmer water off of my return pump. That means one return pump is doing many jobs on my tank. It helps me save a little bit of electricity. I still have the pumps on the skimmer doing their recirculating job. So, Keep this in mind, if you're thinking about a recirculating skimmer and you're designing your system, make sure you give yourself enough of a return pump to feed that recirculating skimmer the water that it needs, help you save a little bit on electricity. And we have to keep it in perspective too. Adding a pump to feed a protein skimmer doesn't require all that much electricity. You're certainly not gonna add a pump and then look at your electricity bill and go, oh darn, well we can't eat out this month because I added that pump to feed that recirculating skimmer. You have to keep it in perspective and with a little bit of planning, having a recirculating skimmer doesn't require any more effort for you. In fact, it might even save you some money because your one return pump can do many jobs for you. Now that you understand what a recirculating skimmer is, it's time that I review this Hydor Performer 2005. Let's keep a couple things in perspective here. Number one, I've been using this skimmer for six months continuously on my 235 gallon tank. Now this skimmer is definitely plus one, which is what I recommend when you go to choose a protein skimmer. Now, if you don't know what I mean by going plus one, just follow the link at the bottom of your screen. Number two, during the time that I've been using this skimmer, I went from no bio load in the tank all the way up to full bio load like I have right now. So that's the background on the skimmer. What am I looking at when I go to review a skimmer? Well, number one, I'm not looking for does it produce bubbles? Now certainly it has to produce bubbles, but I see lots of skimmer reviews where it's just footage of a skimmer foaming. It's like, okay, all skimmers produce bubbles and they all foam. That's not really of interest to me. What I'm more concerned about is does it produce good skimmate and how quiet is this skimmer? There's nothing more annoying to me when you have a loud skimmer and you're sitting there going 
or all this vibration drives me crazy. I can walk into people's houses and go, that's your skimmer, isn't it? They're like, how do you know that? I'm like, I can just tell. I'm like tuned to it. So keeping those two things in mind, let's dig in deeper to the Hydor Performer 2005. First, let's go over the basic stats of the Hydor Performer 2005. Footprint on this bad boy is 12.6 inches by 14.6 inches. Next, the 2005 is rated for tanks up to 800 gallons, normally stocked. And for heavy stock tanks, Hydor says the 2005 will handle up to 575 gallons. The skimmer is driven by two L45 foaming pumps pulling 25 watts of power each. The 2005 also features adjustable airflow and water levels via two independent knobs. Now, let's put the Hydor 2005 up to a noise test. With the skimmer on, the decibel rating of my tank was 57 decibels. When I turned the skimmer off, the decibel rating fell to 56. Now, one decibel is nothing. You're not gonna hear the skimmer running over the other white noise in your tank, and you're certainly not gonna notice when you turn it on or off. So the noise test, passed with flying colors. Next up, skimmate test. Does the skimmer actually skim well? Here's a picture of the skimmate produced during low bio load on my tank. As you can see, there's plenty of frothy bubbles. Here's another picture of the skimmate produced under heavy bio load on my tank. Nice and dark skimmate, and let me tell you, it stinks. My wife even complains that when I empty the protein skimmer cup down the sink, the whole kitchen stinks. So the skimmate test, consider it aced. Any product review that I do for you all, I'm committed to showing you things that I like, as well as something or more things that I would like to see done differently with the product. In the case of the Hydor Performer 2005, I like to have a detachable skimmer body from the base of the skimmer. If it was detachable, you could easily get in there and give it a deep cleaning if you needed to. Now let's keep this in perspective though. On the Hydor Performer 2005, it's a big skimmer. I can easily get my hand down in the neck of the skimmer, do all the cleaning that I might want to. And let's be honest, how many of us take our whole skimmer out of the sump, I mean completely take it out and give it a good deep cleaning? Take it all apart, scrub all the parts, and really give it a deep cleaning. Not that many of you, I'll be honest, I maybe do it once a year. And in my case, I have no light down in the sump here, so I'm not gonna be growing any algae in the skimmer that I'm gonna need to clean out of there. So it would be nice if the skimmer body was attachable from the base. However, the skimmer performs well and it's quiet, so I'm willing to overlook that small fact, minor grievance in my book. When it comes time to pick a protein skimmer for your tank, I highly recommend that you do not skimp on this piece of equipment. Having a protein skimmer that doesn't produce any skimmate, makes a lot of noise, and kicks a lot of micro bubbles into your tank is no fun. The point of us having a saltwater tank is to enjoy it, so don't skimp on your protein skimmer. In my case, I'm happy that I made the investment in the Hydor Performer 2005 because it works great, skims well, it's quiet, and I really like that I don't have to deal with any water depth issues. Just put the skimmer in my tank, hook it up, and away I go. So overall, very happy with the Hydor Performer 2005, and for those of you outside the U.S., I'm happy to report that it's distributed worldwide, so you can get your hands on one. Till next time. I'm Mark Callie and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Have a good one, enjoy your tanks, and know your tank personality.